Week 6 of Major League Baseball was wild, with familiar faces making their mark in new places. Oh. Deep drive, left center. Myers back, track, wall, see ya! A long home run for Soto. First one. In the air to left center field, carrying pretty well to the track. It's at the wall, and it's gone! Teoscar Hernandez! New faces putting their name on the map. He gets another, that's nine strikeouts for Jared Jones. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Ten strikeouts for Jared Jones. A swing and a drive, deep right center. It's got a chance. Cubs win the ball game. Michael Bush, a game winning home run. Listen to this crowd. And young teams proving they're the real deal. The single in the third. Here's a high fly ball, Rutschman, deep to left field, it's gone! Adley Rutschman strikes back with his third hit in three at-bats. Face him, Junior due for a homer, four win, and a long time, and it is gone, yes! We got a little bit of everything this week. Here's everything that went down in week six. Part one, last weekend. This week kicked off with a bang as we were treated to the matchup that everyone has been waiting to see. Game 1 did not disappoint, with the teams trading blows sending the game tied into extra innings. In the 11th inning, unlikely Dodger hero Andy Pajes grabbed his 4th hit of the game. Game 2 was no contest. Tyler Glass now was dominant in 7 innings, striking out 10 Braves. On the other side, the Dodgers massacred Brave pitching. collecting 16 hits and 11 runs to easily take the series. LA wasn't done yet though. Shohei Otani would put the exclamation point on the series sweep with a two homer game on Sunday night. The Dodgers would go on to sweep Miami during the week, giving them a perfect 6-0 record. With the Braves getting swept, this put the Phillies in a position to take the lead in the East during their series with the Giants. Bryce Harper and co. were up for the challenge, scoring 29 runs across the four-game series. Fly ball, left center field, that's well hit, Conforto's going back, it is gone! Opposite field, home run for Harper! It's a three-run bomb! Maybe more impressive was the Philly bullpen. The bullpen has been the Achilles heel for this team in the past, but was fantastic in this series. Current Cy Young favorite Zach Wheeler secured the sweep with an 11-strikeout performance on Sunday. This gave Philadelphia their 10th straight home win and first place in the NL East. Speaking of 10 straight wins, the Twins were looking to extend their win streak past 10 games when they took on the Red Sox. Minnesota's 11th win would be a challenge having to face Tanner Houck in the series opener. Chris Paddock outdueled Houck and the Twins were able to scrape across enough runs to take game one. Pablo Lopez put on another fantastic performance in the second game to give their Twins their 12th straight win and the series. The streak would end there though as Boston took Sunday's game, but the win streak has erased the bad start for Minnesota and put them right back into the playoff hunt. Another series with playoff implications was the battle for the lead in the NL Central. Veteran SP acquisitions continued to pay off for Milwaukee as Joe Ross held the Cubs to just one run on Friday. The Brewers were able to strike late against the Chicago bullpen to grab the game in the 8th. The Cubs punched back in Game 2, hitting 3 homers en route to a 5-0 lead. The Brewers made a comeback attempt late, but Hector Neris was just able to hold on to grab the save in the ninth. On Sunday, the Brewers no doubt felt good with ace Freddy Peralta taking the mound, while the Cubs were going with Javier Assad in just his second full season. With the series on the line, the starters went back and forth, putting zeros on the board before Chicago finally broke through in the fifth. Line drive, base hit, slicing it into right center. Racing around to score is Pete Crow Armstrong, and it comes Amaya to the plate, and the throw off line two come in to score. Assad never did falter, throwing six shutout innings before the bullpens finished the game and grabbed the series win. Meanwhile, in New York, the Yankees were looking to bounce back against the Tigers after losing the division lead last week. In Game 1, the Tiger pitching staff did all they could, shutting out the Yanks for 8 innings before 4 straight hits in the ninth allowed New York to walk it off. Done. And they can! There it is! A base 
hit for Rizzo. Verdugo scores, and the Yankees with a 2-1 walk-off win. It was the Yankee bullpen that prevailed in Game 2, throwing four scoreless innings to hold the lead. Then it was the star power in Game 3. High drive, right field, veering back, track, wall, see ya! Home run, Judge! Soto, swinging a hard liner down the right field line, that's a base hit. It is a bases clearing double for Juan Soto. That secured the sweep for New York and put the Yanks back 10 games over 500. With the Yankees sweeping the Tigers, the O's would have to bring out brooms of their own to keep the lead in the AL East. They would be in Cincinnati to play the Reds, and seemingly everywhere you looked, there was a young, talented future star doing something cool. Two short. Cole Irvin dialed up another great performance in Game 1 before Ryan O'Hearn finally deployed the killing blow in the 7th. In Game 2, John Means was making his season debut after being hurt to start the season. He looked like he had never left, tossing 7 shutout innings with 8 Ks to grab the win on the mound. On Sunday, it was a straight up hitting parade as the O's put up 11 runs with 5 different players picking up RBIs. Finally, in Houston, the Astros were looking to win their third straight series with the Mariners in town. In Game 1, Houston was able to manufacture four runs in the seventh to steal the win. In Game 2, Logan Gilbert was back to dominating as he threw eight scoreless innings to put the series to a decisive Game 3. Seattle struck first on Sunday, getting out to a three-run lead by the top of the sixth. Kyle Tucker brought the game within one before minor league journeyman John Singleton gave the Astros the lead in the seventh. The Mariners tied it again in the eighth before Cal Raleigh called game in the ninth. There you go, line drive. That's it to the Crawford boxes and the Mariners have a 5-4 lead. Andres Munoz shut the door, giving Seattle the series win. Part two this week. After the Twins lost their win streak on Sunday, they faced another tough test in the Seattle Mariners during the week. In Game 1, former top Blue Jay prospect Simeon Woods Richardson had the best start of his career. He struck out 8 Mariners in 6 shutout innings, outdueling Luis Castillo for the win. The Mariners struck back in Game 2, scoring 10 runs, and in Game 3, Carlos Correa and Trevor Larnick went back to back. Correa sends it high and deep to left center field in the gap. Rodriguez back at the track, at the wall. That is gone. Larnick sends it to right field and deep. Back it goes, deep it goes, and way out of here. Twins go back to back. Minnesota never looked back, cruising to victory. This meant the series came down to Thursday, with Seattle sending sensational Logan Gilbert to the hill. The Twins jumped all over Gilbert, crushing him for eight earned runs and securing their fifth consecutive series win. Another team looking to find some momentum was the Padres, who had the chance to finally get back to 500 with a series win over the Cubs. In Game 1, Hugh Darvish and fresh off the IL, Justin Steele both dealt through five innings. As soon as Steele left the game though, the Padres ambushed the Chicago bullpen, putting up six runs and never looking back. In Game 2, Shoto Imanaga continued his historic rookie season with another fantastic outing. The Cubs bullpen again surrendered the lead, but this time Michael Bush had something to say about it. Meaning the series would come down to Game 3. Dylan Cease was brought to San Diego to be an ace, and an ace he was in this outing. A dominant performance striking out 12 Cubs in 7 shutout innings, a series win for the Padres, and the team is right back in the heart of the wildcard picture. One of the teams chasing the Padres for that third wildcard spot is the D-backs. Admittedly, the team has had a tough schedule to start the season, but as a team coming off a World Series appearance, they are no doubt off to a disappointing start. They would take on the Reds, who after a nice start have been ice cold since late April. One of the bright spots for Arizona so far has been ace Zach Gallant, who was good again in the series opener, getting the team off to a good start. In Game 2, late free agent addition Jordan Montgomery was good again also. A late A. Eugenio Suarez home run gave the D-backs just enough insurance to hold on in the ninth. With a chance for a sweep, Jock Peterson got the scoring started with a first inning homer in Game 3. With the game tied in the eighth, future face of the franchise Corbin Carroll came through to give the D-backs the sweep in Cincy. 
The Braves were coming off being swept by the Dodgers when they faced another tough test with the Red Sox coming to town for a two-game series. Cutter Crawford and Ronaldo Lopez both pitched well in Game 1, so it was down to the bullpens. Atlanta was able to break through for two runs in the eighth to grab the win. In Game 2, it was former Red Sox Chris Sale who struck out 10 Boston hitters in six shutout innings. The Brave bullpen was again strong, and the Braves grabbed a nice bounce-back sweep. Speaking of bounce backs, the Astros were trying to get back on track and who better to do it against than the Yankees. The team looked poised to take game one with Justin Verlander on the mound, but he was in for a rude awakening as the Yankees jumped all over him. And drill to right field and deep. Going back, Tucker, turning, looking, see ya. 3-1 Yankees. Oh, Stanton, who drives it into left center field. Stanton got a chance, left center field wall and gone, goodbye. He would end up allowing eight hits and seven runs, and the Yanks cruised to a 10-3 victory in Game 1. Game 2 was more of the same with Yankees mashing Astro pitching, putting up nine more runs on the board to grab the series win. Houston did avoid the sweep on Thursday, but it feels like the team still can't find any momentum. It's clearly still early, but already being eight and a half games back in the West, the team needs to turn it around sooner rather than later. Finally, in Cleveland, the Guardians were looking to stay hot against the Tigers. Game 1 was a pitcher's duel with Tristan McKenzie and Jack Flaherty both pitching well, but the Guardians' bullpen had ice in the veins as they combined for four shutout innings to hold the one-run lead. Game 2 was the complete opposite, with both teams entering an absolute slugfest. The lead changed five times, but it was Detroit who came out on top, collecting 15 hits and 11 runs in the victory. The series came down to Game 3, and the Tigers jumped out to a 4-2 lead and held it all the way into the 8th inning. Nobody seems to be giving Cleveland credit for what they've done so far, but in this league, there's only one way to prove you're the real deal. Just keep winning. Bring up David Fry. in the 8th, ninth, and 10th innings.